How about a game of golf? Ether Gazer officially launched globally as of the last 24 hours. Now, I have been playing this game for roughly the last week globally. I was given access to the test servers and have accumulated a ton of footage, the characters, the story. I've had a substantial amount of time to slowly learn the game, learn the intricacies, learn what it does well and experience what it doesn't do well. And I know a lot of you are going to immediately compare this to Honkai Impact 3rd and Punishing Grey Raven, and that is a fair comparison to make. And for those of you that are just here wondering, is it better than either of those respective games? No, no. I, I will immediately state this right here and now. No, this is not better, but this is different. This is a different kind of game with similar features, similar functions. Does that make it a worse game? No, I do not think Aether Gazer is worse than either Punishing Grey Raven or Honkai Impact Art. I think it is genuinely different enough to be enjoyable. Now, yes. let's start off here by going through the characters. There are I'll do what admittedly I'll not that many I'm characters still. available at launch, which oh. makes sense. They continue to, it's a, it's a gotcha game, uh, so they continue to release yeah. new characters yes, over time. That's how right. they make money after all. The characters themselves well, look, well. Is there they look beautiful, like, there's no denying, compared to most gacha games, Ether yeah. Gazer's characters, they are stunning, they are very fluid in their movements, the English dub for the characters is fantastic, Looking for me? the clothes look beautiful, like, everything about the characters in this game, I'm always here. I think, oh, is of the highest service quality and okay. the fact that there are actually a surprising number Leave of male characters me. as opposed to just waifus i know there are a lot of gacha games that released recently that for some reason seem to omit male characters and i think that's fucking dumb so Do having one for me? two and like oh, hey, some of these guys you know they, they are fucking fit but they I approve. admittedly introduced for oh. five i think characters in total that are male. Yeah, so there are five Man. males and like, I don't know, 12, 15 female characters. So characters have a level of depth to them. They have certain layers with regards to how you go about customizing them. You have your basic stats, you have your basic skills that you continue to level up, you have a weapon, and every character has the ability to equip unique functors. Functors are essentially, they're an additive to your stats, and they provide beneficial effects to your character. As you can see on the side, access key attack plus 20%, stat bonuses, functor powers. Now, every every character has a certain type of, a, a certain category, a certain class archetype. As you can see, Shinori yes. Tsukuyomi here has this little flower she uses katanas and she uses this specific functor. Now, another character that I really liked was uh, well, well. Jinai Kuruno Tokotachi, to who also me? uses katanas and the same functor. So what this means is that unfortunately, since I only have one five star functor, I had to choose between the two characters who I wanted. I opted for like as much as I would have loved her in my group. I really, truly would have. Shinori Tsukuyomi is just so much more powerful with much better skills and a much better ultimate. And she's the limited banner character. So based purely off of that, you know she's gonna be better than every other hero, every other character. Before we go any further, I just wanna take a moment here to thank all of our incredible patrons. You guys allow me to continue to play games like this for a living and I can never truly repay that kindness. Also, if you're interested, I stream over on Twitch every single weekend. You should totally come on over and join me. Then we have the option for sigils. Sigils allow for you to significantly alter the stats, the build of your character. I opted for a glass cannon type for Shinori Tsukuyomi because I wanted her to push through content or allow for me to push through content as fast as possible. So I opted for the highest damage sigils I could. Now, unfortunately, these were very limited, so I couldn't 
equip that I'm on every single one of my characters, but I mean, I may do with what I could. Now you can upgrade these, you can continue to get them, make them stronger and stronger. They use materials that you earn through supplies. And then you have the option to build them further by utilizing their ether codes. These are essentially like miniature talent trees that affect a certain type, uh, a certain, they, they give them a certain build, a certain skill tree, a certain affinity. I opted for red because, I mean, I'm gonna be honest here, I really didn't delve too much into what this actually is. I just kind of wanted to maximize damage and I looked at what each what each tree gave and attempted to maximize damage, not maximize utility, not maximize support, but just maximize damage. Now that covers the characters, outside of, you know, limit breaking them, which is gated behind minimum level requirement, transcending them, which is a means with which to boost them and boost their ranking from like an A rank to an S rank to an SS rank. I think I actually managed to get an SS rank at one point. Not entirely sure. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I was just seeing things. Maybe I got like an SS, like an SS plus rank. I, I honestly don't remember who it was with. Was Understood. it with uh, Shinku? No. Any? Okay. Anyway, that's that. That is essentially the characters. Now, I mean, you you know what missions are, right? Daily, weekly, story. You log in daily. You complete a few dailies. You log in weekly. You complete the weeklies. You do the story missions. You redeem them. You get XP. You get currency, you get various other kinds of rewards. There is the gotcha, which admittedly isn't horrible. So the gotcha functions like this. After every 10 pulls, you are guaranteed an A rank hero. After 70 pulls, you are guaranteed an S rank hero. After 70 pulls, you are guaranteed a 50% chance of obtaining the limited banner character. Now, if you fail to get the limited banner character, you're required to hit 70 again after hitting 70 the second time you will have a 100 percent chance of obtaining the limited banner character available who in this instance is shinrei tsukuyomi so if i pull 70 times 50 percent chance of getting her if i fail to get her by the 140th pull i will have a 100 percent chance of obtaining her i know 50 50 gacha systems are kind of shit. i know it, it's not gonna appeal to everyone but I mean, it's better than having to get to 90, like in Genshin and Wuthering Waves and Honkai, right? So at the very least, it has a, a reduced rate in place. There are these weird little dog things <laughs> that you can uh, unlock by meeting certain conditions. You can equip various different chips on them that provide various statistical or passive benefits to your characters. There are the functors that you can view. I actually have a lot of uh, five star functors. Well, okay, I have five, five star functors, which admittedly isn't really that much. I already explained what those were and how they affect your character. There's a shop. I mean, it, it's pretty standard, sigil shop, limited supplies. Like, you know, there's a bunch of shit in here that you can buy. Whether you find it beneficial to you or not is completely subjective. There's a guild system in place, but I always feel like guilds and gacha games are kind of pointless. I mean, you know, they, they provide you a shop that you can buy from. There are certain missions that you can do. Like, it, it's a guild system. It, at the end of the day, whether you join it or not is not really necessarily going to impact you. Then there's the main story. At present, there are nine chapters. I have completed up through... Chapter 7 right now, or just started Chapter 7 right now. There are multiple difficulty modes that are present. The spike in difficulty is actually very large, very noticeable, by the way. Then there are the supply game modes where you can grind various different resources like the XP items to increase your level, skill point items to increase your skill points, your access key. I mean, these are all absolutely necessary to further enhance your character, to transcend them, to level them, to limit break them, to level their weapons, their skill points. There are a variety of different game modes that are completely unrelated to supplies in the main story though. The battle sweep, joint training, gen zone analytics. There are a ton of challenge modes that you can do. Honestly, there are a lot of game modes that are present in this game. Like I feel like they, they actually took a lot of time and a lot of effort to provide us with a multitude of different things to do. And I feel like I appreciate that. I, I appreciate 
having so many different things to do where I, I'm not forced to just like grind the main story where I'm not forced to do repeatable stages, repeatable content. Now, let me, let me show you the combat. Cause I know a lot of you are like, but is the combat any good? And yeah, the combat is, is really fucking good. I'll show you, let's Understood. go with, uh, we'll, we'll play as uh, Shinori Tsukuyumi. Cause as you can tell, like she's kind of my highest CP character. Now, what I like about the combat in this game is that you're allowed to deploy three different characters. Now in like Genshin, in Wuthering Waves, in Punishing Grey Raven, you deploy a set number of characters, three characters, four characters, and you swap between them, but there's only ever one character on screen at any given time. That's not the case in this. In this, your entire party is deployed together. They are completely AI operated and AI controlled. You cannot swap to them. They all have their own unique abilities, their own fighting styles, and their own and their own ultimate abilities. And they all complement one another. They also possess, interestingly, uh, certain kinds of combos that they can utilize, like combo ultimate abilities. Like there are some of the, the lolly characters that have the ability to combo together. It is really cool. Like there there is a lot of Here's my answer. Very fine, very interesting, very defined, very intricate uh, mechanics present in this game that I really, I, I can't really explain. They're just, you need to pay close attention to your abilities, your input, and who combos with who to make the most of every encounter. Now, at the end of the day, this is a very spammy game. You know, you're going to be spending a lot of your time hitting, I am playing this via an emulator right now, not on a phone. I feel like playing action games like this on the phone are fucking horse shit. Like, I love punishing Grey Raven, I do, but I cannot play that game on my phone. So, this is much the same way. I couldn't even play Genshin on my phone, man. I couldn't fucking figure out how to rotate the screen in Genshin. My thumb would just, like, start zooming in and out, and, like, it would drive me nuts. <laughs> but as you can tell, the combat is phenomenal. Like, just looking at it, it is absolutely freaking gorgeous. Everything about this game is absolutely gorgeous. <sighs> but is it going to be a major competitor for Punishing Grey Raven or Tonkai Impact 3rd? I don't think so. I feel like Ether Gazer definitely has the potential to be a good game. I, I've genuinely had fun in it. There are aspects of it that I feel are really exceptional, like its combat and like its graphics. But I found the story to be fairly underwhelming based off of the seven chapters I've done thus far, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, you know, it's kind of par for the core when it comes to gacha games. And the voice acting is surprisingly good. Like, let me, let me, let me just address that. I feel like the voice acting, the voice actors in general have done a fantastic job of bringing these characters to life. I just feel like there is so much fluff in the story that they could have just cut out and had a much more condensed, much easier to understand, connect with, and get engaged with story. And I know that, I know you guys understand this because Punishing Grey Raven does the exact same thing. The first two chapters in Punishing Grey Raven made me want to quit, but I stuck with it and it turned out to be a very fun, very good game with a quite a complex narrative the further he got through it. Now, at the end of the day, I feel like this is a good game. This is not a fantastic, a, a genre-defining, innovative game by any stretch of the imagination. I think that this is a game that looks really good, that plays really good, and could give us something new to play for a few weeks, for a few months, until another alternative comes out that provides us an opportunity to move from this to whatever that is, whether it's Wuthering Waves, something else entirely a new strategy game new action game I i'm having fun you can download this and play it right now depending on how well it does in its first few months will affect whether this does ultimately get a pc release or not so i guess maybe in the future if we're lucky and the game is received positively we'll be able to play this on our pc like punishing gray raven if not then I guess, you know, that's just another Yostar game that ends up down the drain, like Revived Witch more recently. Yostar, of course, does actually publish Arknights and Azure Lane, 
and they do a fantastic job with publishing it so i genuinely hope they do find success with ether gazer especially given how good this game looks and plays but at the end of the day like the only way you're gonna know if you like it or not is if you personally go ahead and download and play it now if ether gazer isn't your kind of game absolutely no problem i got you, you covered with two break? different videos on screen right now that might be of more interest to you go ahead and take a look if if not then I'll, i guess i'll just see you guys tomorrow